So what's up to all you beautiful people out there? I hope y'all having a super blessed day, wherever you are in this world, whatever time it is right now. And in today's video, I just want to talk to the fellas. Um, in the last video, I talked with the ladies about what it means to be admired and adored. And this time around, I just really want to give some or breathe some light and some clarity onto what it means for us as men to have accountability over these women who we're supposed to adore and admire. And so stay tuned. So let me just start by saying that I feel like so many relationships falter because as men and women within society, we don't know our roles and how to play our parts within relationships. And I'm not talking about who's more powerful, who's in control, who gets to dictate what, or who cooks, who cleans, who does this, who pays for this, who watches the game. You know, I'm not talking about none of that. I'm talking about just in a sense of a biblical essence and what it means for a man to lead. And so what I'm saying is if we open up our Bibles and take it all the way back to Genesis, Ever since day one, we as men have always been trying to place the blame on women for things that God is holding us accountable for. God is holding us responsible to lead because he created women for us. You know, it, he said that it's not good for a man to be alone. And that doesn't necessarily mean that every man or woman is supposed to be in a relationship. I've stated that within the last video, but we all need to be cared for and loved um, by someone outside of ourselves. That's just the reality of us as humans. And that's not me saying that. God, that was one of the first things that he said after he made us. That it's not good for us to be alone. And so the point that I'm trying to make is that if God made women for us, then we're supposed to care for them just like he cares for all of us. And that's not to say that we're over them. You know, I want to make for any women who watch that. I'm not saying that I'm saying that within relationships, especially and I'm I'm speaking more so to the heart of marriage. But I'm trying to um, umbrella this thing and make it to where people who are not married yet can understand this concept, because within marriage. Men are responsible. God told me it's my fault if the relationship fail, no matter what transpires. Not because my wife never do anything wrong, but because I asked her to marry me. And because just like in every aspect of life, if you take it from working at a job or the presidency and, you know, the government, police officers, everything in life has a certain chain of command. And like I said, within a company, who's responsible if that company goes under the CEO or whoever um, is the head of that particular or I'm a, in, in this particular uh, matter, I'm going to say the leader because men are supposed to lead women. So as the leaders, just like someone who is over a company, we're responsible if this thing goes under. And that's not to say that certain things don't happen. Women are getting beat on. Um, there's all kind of things that that happen within a relationship that cause them to go in a diagonal spiral. So I'm not sitting up here saying every man who ever got a divorce or a woman who got a divorce, y'all wrong. And I'm not doing that. That's not the heart of what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that as men, God wants us to do everything within our power to hold it together. And I will say that some of us have given up just based off of the uh, sense that, or the, for the sake of our own happiness, more so than because there was really issues that we couldn't conquer, you know, and that's not what God is expecting from us as men. He's holding us responsible to hold these things together. It's not a woman's responsibility to hold a relationship together. That's just the truth of the matter. And that's something that he has been prying into me over these 11 years that I've been married. My wife, she will not be judged in the same way for this marriage as I am because God is saying that as a leader, I put you in a position to love her like I love the church. And loving her like I love the church is to say that 
you're the one as a man that's going to have to make all these sacrifices and compromises and work with her and work through her issues and work through your own issues at the same time by just coming in to me to prayer. Like a man who, who, know, who understands accountability understands how much he's going to have to go to God and say, how do I handle this? Because we can't figure these things out by ourselves. And so the second point that I want to make to you is that leadership is servitude. As men, we're taught in this world, you know, to be tough, be mighty, lead with aggression, you know, be powerful. But God says lead in humility, lead in love, lead in vulnerability and acknowledge that you're weak. Because Jesus was up on his throne. He had the humility to take on the form of a man to come down here and save us for the things that we are sinners for. He never committed any sins, but he loves us so much that he bowed down beneath who he is in order to give us salvation. And so the Bible tells us that women are the weaker vessel, but that doesn't mean that we're supposed to be in this world running over them over sexualizing them. That means that God is expecting us to lead them in the same way that he led leads us. And something that I had to understand about my own wife is that she was raised by a single mother. So that's all she ever saw was a woman who had to be independent, a woman who had to carry her own weight in the same way that men are supposed to, um, carry certain burdens. And that's not to say that we don't need help because that's also a point that I want to um, attest to that we as men have to be able to ask for help. Great leaders know when to ask for help. But I had to understand that because my wife saw all of that from her mother, that is what she gleaned off of. And what that means is that she came into this marriage with the mindset of, I have to take care of myself. And that's not conducive to a healthy and whole marriage because then on the other hand, you have a man like me who's grown up thinking that we as men are supposed to carry all of the load. And so I was making her feel as though I was trying to control her. And the worst thing about us as men, and I, I'm not even going to put that on all of y'all. The worst thing about me as a man is that I always have a hard time asking for help. I mean, I've always felt like men are just self-reliant and we, we handle business on our own. You know, that it was evident in my childhood. I never, I never wanted to feel like less than. I never wanted to feel like I couldn't do something. So I always felt this level of, pride that made me feel like, man, I can do this. And that's how we train. That's how we, as, I mean, I would even go as far as to say women are trained like that because that's what we all see, be independent. And so that's not conducive to a healthy marriage. And then you have to, or not you have to, but I have to consider me and my wife, neither one of us seen a healthy and whole marriage. So she's Got her perspective, I got my perspective, and we both love each other, but we don't know how to make it work because I'm not man enough to say, I need your help. I'm not man enough to fill in the gaps, um, fill in for our differences, fill in the voids by being humble because that is what accountability over your wife or your woman is, it's, it's learning that you are going to have to make up the difference. When both of y'all can't see eye to eye, you're the one who's going to have to figure out how to humble yourself. Because of course we want, we always want the other individual within the marriage to bow down to us and, you know, you do it my way. But that's just, what do you do when, when you can't come to an agreement? Somebody has to stand down. And my mentality was to do everything aggressively. So now we're bumping heads because both of us are trying to play the same role. You know, because 
You can't be whole when both of y'all are trying to play the same positions. And I had to acknowledge that it was up to me in Christ to learn how to fall back and ask for help. Because I that's something our egos as men, we do not like asking for help in any situations. We we always want to feel like we can do it. And I I had to realize that I wouldn't let my wife help me. You know, I wouldn't listen to her in the ways that I needed to in order to make her feel like she is a part of us. I made her feel like we going to do everything my way. But then deep down, I felt like she wanted to do everything her way. So it's just it's this back and forth thing that just never ends until somebody steps up and says, I'm the man. And you know what? It's not even about being right no more. I just want us to be able to commune. I just want to love on you so good that you start to feel how God make me feel because I'm supposed to be your leader. God is my head. I want to make you feel like you have just as much power in this relationship as I do because we're not supposed to believe in ourselves, but we have to believe that God is working through us. So he's allowing us to feel like we're just as powerful as he is, not in the sense of like how the devil does it, but that we have his strength working in us so we we can move mountains. And so I had to I had to realize that I was making my wife feel belittled, you know, like she don't have any say over me just as much as I want to believe I'm the leader and I have say over her. And you cannot build a woman's trust like that. I had to realize that. Marriage is a, a trust building process for a man before you can before a woman will let you lead her and trust you in that way. It takes. I mean, I thought like soon as we get married, she trusts me now. I'm her husband. I didn't realize it's a process just like our process with God. It's a trust building. We are building faith. We don't just you don't just be a born again Christian. And then all of a sudden you just trust God with all your heart. It take years, you know, it take years of foundational building to build trust. And we have to recognize that the main re reason that we give God our trust is because he was willing to be wrong even when he wasn't. And so we have to be that same exact way with our wives. Leaders build trust by taking the blame. When your woman sees that she's wrong and you still willing to take the blame, because a lot of times what I've noticed is that a woman knows when she's wrong, but she just don't want to give in. And I can't speak about all women because maybe some of y'all don't do it. But my wife, I know she does that. And I'll give y'all one particular example. One day I felt like she was wrong about something, but I went and bought her some flowers. And I tell a lot of men this story all the time because I, it was a turning point for me internally when I seen how God works. I went and bought her some flowers and I remember coming back and giving it to her and she just broke down. Something so simplistic, but it made an impact because she was like, she knew within her heart, like I was wrong, but this man loved me so much. He still went and did something for me. And then I think she, the next day she went and bought me something or whatever, but that's how you build leadership. That's how you build that bond and, and make her trust you. You willing to be sorry even when you aren't the one who was wrong because you just love that person so much. It's unconditional and you don't even care. And so I'm not saying just let your woman run over you or ladies, I'm not telling y'all y'all can run over y'all man. But what I am saying is that great leaders know how to pick their battles. There are some things that I'm adamant about, especially when it comes to our spiritual walk together that I just won't relinquish the reins to my wife. Like, no, we have to do it this way because God has put it on my heart too strongly. And that's when you have to just go to God and, and, and just pray. You have to be a man of prayer in order to have some type of stability within your relationship because accountability and, and taking ownership for a relationship is just you being the one who understands that God is looking at you to be like him more so than 
your wife. He's looking, he's looking at men more so to mirror his expectations. And when I say that, that's humble ourselves. And I'm not saying women don't be humble. And you could just, like I said, I already said that. But I'm saying that God is holding us accountable as men. We're the leaders. We're the leaders. And leadership is servitude. So we have to serve in humility because that's what it's all about. Great leaders don't want to be served. We want to serve. And so many of us go into marriage feeling like, um, what can this person offer me? What can they do for me? And we get it all messed up because Jesus didn't come down here just to point out commandments and say, do X, Y, and Z. He, he came down here to actually serve us. He was a God on the throne and he came down here to serve us, man. He came down here. He came out here to serve us because he love us that much. And we got to do the same thing for our women, man. We got to do the same thing for our women. We have to. It's pertinent. Leadership is servitude. And so the third thing I want to point out to you is that leadership is about offering all of yourself to the ones who are following you. So if you lead in your wife, then you have to be willing to offer all of yourself to her because what happens is we walk down the altar, we say our vows for better or for worse, but then we only want to offer as much as we feel like that other person is offering us. We only want to give so much until, like I already talked about this a little bit earlier, but until we don't feel like you giving me enough, it's not, you not doing enough for me. So why should I give to you in leaders? We don't think like that. We say, I'm going to keep giving all of myself to you no matter what. And just to make things a little more personal, let me just say that me and my wife were talking about divorce within the first year and a half of our marriage. I was 25. She was, what, 24. And we were bumping heads like crazy. And of course, we were blaming each other. You doing this, you doing that. And so we end up separating for like somewhere around six to eight months. And throughout that time, I can't speak on what she was doing. She was she went to stay with her mother. But I can say that personally, for the first time in my life, I really began to dig in and dedicate myself to God like I've never done before. Because here I am for someone to get married that young. First and foremost, you had to really feel like you love a person. And I felt like I was doing everything in my power to make her happy. You know, I was doing everything that I thought you should do in order to make the best of a relationship. And God showed me that so many of us within this world, we have relationships thought out all wrong. We think that we're in each other's life to make each other happy. And you can't in. in and you can't increase each other's happiness. All you can do is just try to enhance each other by pushing each other closer to God. That's really all a relationship is. You know, it's we have this mindset of love me, love me, love me. But really, God uses marriage to prune you and to say, love him more. You're supposed to be pointing the people in your life to God, especially within marriage. That's all that God does is just chisel at you and just work on you. And that person is a mirror and you constantly looking at yourself. They constantly pointing out your flaws. You constantly telling them what they do wrong. And, and at the end of the day, you have to be able to step outside of all those things, this, this blame game and say, what is this really all about? And as a man, that's what God, within that six to eight months that we were broken up, that's what God really allowed for me to do. Really just look at myself. And I began to realize that I was putting my wife in a position of him. You know, I think it was Paul who said, it's, it's hard to please your wife and God. And God was really showing me within that time within my life that I cared more about building up my life here in this earth and having all these adventures with my wife and living a good life and all these things more so than telling people about him. And that's what he put me down here to do. Just like he put so many of y'all out here to do the same thing as men. 
We supposed to be pointing people up to God, to Jesus. And we don't do that. We allow for all these other things within our lives to take place and we forget all about it. And so basically, God was breaking down our marriage to get to me. He was showing me that us as men are not just called to be husbands. We're called to be as many things as he is. He's all things to all people. And sometimes us as leaders can just get focused on our families and we box out the rest of the world and we just feel like I'm going to live in my bubble and I'm going to live only in my circle. And we don't focus on our spiritual gifts and and becoming true leaders and really being able to lead people away from here in general. And so God was revealing to me within all of this destruction that was happening in my marriage that that's all I cared about. <laughs> and it, that's I know that sounds what is that called? An oxymoron, like an oxymoron, like God was breaking down our marriage to show me that life isn't all about marriage by itself. Because us as men, this is these are the things that we live for, you know. But ironically, God is saying that he'll bring your wife closer to you the closer you get to him. And great leaders know to follow God. And we understand, like I said, leadership is servitude. We understand that we're here on this earth to serve other people. And not in the same way because all of us don't have the same spiritual gifts. But we all have something to offer each other in one way or another. And, and until, we have folk, until we focus on that, God will bust up our lives. He will bust up our lives until we understand that we have to be thinking about what we have to offer other people because that's what leaders do. They think about what they can give, not how can they build themselves up, themselves up in their own lives, but what they have to offer to everyone, especially their wife. And that's what God is holding us accountable for. He's holding us accountable to understand that it's all about what we have to offer our counterpart. I was thinking so much about, man, we're going to have this beautiful life together and, you know, we're going to have this magical, you know, it's, it's the worldly kind of love that... It's, it's no challenge. You know, it's no challenging each other. It's just this magical, wonderful thing that you don't have to work at. It just happens and it just everything, you know. But of course, God does allow things to start to come together for the good of both of you. But it takes a man standing up and first saying, I'm accountable for this. It ain't about what this person has to offer me. It's about what I have to offer her. And if she don't do anything, then I'm going to still do what I got to do as a man. And that's when you have really begin to understand accountability, when you can say that you don't care what she has to offer you no more. Because real love doesn't come with any expectations. I mean, God doesn't expect for us to do anything for him. He says faith without works is dead because when you love someone, then you naturally want to try to respond to their needs. But there is honestly nothing we can do to repay God for what he did for us. And I learned within that time frame of me and my wife breaking up that it was all about what I needed to do. As much as she was doing a lot of things wrong, God was using that time to change the whole framework of, of what was going on in here for me. And that was to say that you the man, and there are some things that you're going to have to learn how to compromise and sacrifice because it's all about what you what you have to offer your wife. Because we get into this mindset of like this 50-50 things like, oh, okay, you do this, I'm going to do this. But that's not how relationships work. A lot of times my wife is, is doing way more for me than what I'm doing for her. Then a lot of times I'm doing, you know, the brunt of the load. And as a man, you have to have a mindset where even if I'm in this relationship by myself and I'm working at loving her, then I have to do it. Because 
you take someone like Hosea in the Bible, and this is a man whose wife was a prostitute. I told my my wife, we done had conversations. I done told her, like, you cheat on me. Then God already gave me um, scripture to say, that's okay to, to divorce her if she do this to you. But at the same time, he told Hosea to keep pursuing his wife. And so that's a difficult thing for you to be a man who has so much pride and your heart is so into this person and they do something like that to you. But God still held him accountable to make sure that he went after her. And you look at today's world, you never see a man, um, or should I say a woman, prostituting a man. You always see men in a position where we are using women for the wrong things. And that's because we don't understand that we have been placed in a position to where God is looking at how we are treating these women. And I know it's all about women empowerment and, and women want to be independent and all these different things. But that's not the way the world has been set up. That's just not the way the world has been set up. And that's not to discredit anyone, because like I said in the last video, I was raised by a single mother who had to do so much in order to raise two boys. But I've also seen the remnants of that, like what happens because you being put in that type of position. And of course, God can rebuild anything in anyone. But that's not the way things are supposed to be. We as men are supposed to cherish women, adore them, admire them, put them up here and say, I'm going to give you my everything. Because that's the only way to really show God that we are committed to them in the same way that he loves us. It's our only way as leaders to prove to God that we're willing to offer ourselves up for these women, just the same as he was willing to offer his life up for us because we all love to say, I mean, well, when you walk down the altar, you say till death do us part. But what we really mean on the inside is until everything is falling apart and we don't like each other no more. And that's not what leadership is. So we have to realize marriage, it kills you on the inside. And, it, and Paul talks about dying daily. God literally uses marriage to, cut you up on the inside to the point where your old self is dying. You ain't the same person you are no more because you got to change in order to mold into another person. In order for a marriage, you know, a husband and a wife to be one, you have to be cut up. You have to be chiseled at. You have to mold together. And guess who's going to have to do the most offering? Us, men, we have to offer ourselves the most because that is what leadership is. It's us stepping up and saying, I'll do it. <laughs> You're willing to die for her. And we always think about it in a literal sense, like, oh, it's, I'll jump in front of a bullet for you. But we don't think about it in a spiritual sense where just as much as God is, is, is calling us to die daily as men of God, he's calling us to die in part because we have to be molded together with our wife. We have to lead her closer to him by show, by being that example. That example of being willing to lay down our pride. Because I learned that the only way I'm going to be able to get to my wife's heart is through gentleness. And gentleness is humility. It's being willing to offer all of yourself, even in moments where you feel like, you shouldn't. And so the last thing I want to point out to you is that leadership is about knowing where you're leading someone. As simple as it sounds, we as men, we we talk about being leaders and we want to lead our wives, but we have to have some type of vision of where we're even going. Are we just trying to lead them closer to us and make them do what we want to do and love us more and, you know, what are we, where, where are we leading them? And so 
Biblically, we have to hold ourselves accountable for our wife's soul. We have to be trying to lead her soul closer to God because we got to want to get to heaven. We are going to pass away. All this stuff is going to be over with. This is so important. I want to say it again. Leaders care about souls. And on the battlefield, the leader's job is to make sure he comes up with a strategy to save as many lives as he possibly can. In regards to marriage, you're accountable to protect your wife's soul. I'm going to say it one more time. God is holding me accountable for my wife's soul. And this may sound like I'm trying to be too deep or I'm trying to take it too far, but God has shown me that he expects me and he holds me accountable to make sure that we reading together, that we praying together, that we learning about him and that we're focusing our energy into where we're trying to get after this life is all over. And I know a lot of times men are looked at as the people who take care of their homes and they're the breadwinners. They protect women and all these different aspects. But despite how a, a relationship balances out, you know, within our home, I may I may felt like it was necessary for me to take care of all the bills and stuff. But that's just because, like I said, I came from a single mother who I watched struggle. So I wanted to make sure that in my own home, my wife never had to worry about that. But that's neither here nor there. If she was the one who did all that, then it could the roles could easily have been reversed. And that's why I said at the beginning of this video that it's not about who cooks or clean, who pays for this, who watch the kids or none of that. It's about understanding that as a man, you are accountable for your woman's soul. You are responsible to make sure that both of y'all are getting closer to God within that relationship, because that's what relationships are all about within the world as a whole between all of us. We're all supposed to be trying to point each other up, not love, you know, love me more as a as a human being. And, and no, and like I said at the beginning, it's also God said that we're going to feel lonely, you know, that it's not good for a man to be alone. But at the same time, we have to learn that we're meant to get closer to in other individuals. And within that relationship. We're supposed to respond by constantly reminding them that love, that God loves them more than we ever could. And God can love my wife better than I ever could, more than I ever will. And so, so I always got to make sure that it's my priority to make sure that I'm reminding her of that. Because there's no marriage in heaven. You know, I was reading, I don't know their names offhand, but it was several brothers who end up marrying the same woman, you know, successively after each one passed away. You know, they used to live for a long time. So one brother died and then the next brother would come right behind him and take take the same wife that his brother had. I'm, I'm, if my brother watched this, if you take my wife, if something happened to me, I'm, I'm coming back to life and it's over for both of y'all. You know, we don't do that in this day and age. <laughs> but... And he was at, and what the brother was asking, like, whose wife he is he in heaven? And God basically was like, he ain't none of y'all. She my daughter. And so we get so caught up in this worldly love that we don't realize that we're all God's children, sons and daughters. And every relationship is all about him. It's not about, you know, you there's so much fulfillment and so much rewarding things that come out of having a person that's right there for you. My wife is always there for me. I cannot deny that, but she won't need to be once I'm in heaven. I won't need to be there for her in the same ways um, that I try to be now once we get up to heaven. So all that is just null and void. <laughs> and so to close this out, let me just say that Jesus died on the cross for each and every one of us. I don't care whether you're a man or a woman. And he did that because he wanted to show us that I love you so much. I'm responsible for your life. I'm responsible for all your mistakes. I'm responsible for everything that you do wrong. I'm responsible for you. He did that to say, I'm going to lead in servitude. He did that to say, I'm going to offer all of myself to you until your soul is mine. 
You know, God took accountability for our souls. And so, fellas, that's what he's expecting for us to do for the woman that we say we love. Where are we leading her? You know, where are we leading her? And so I'm going to just end it right there and say that on that note, man, I just appreciate you so much for taking the time to watch this. And even if this only for one person, the one person who got something out of this, God bless you. And thank you for taking the time to actually stay with me throughout the whole extent. Because I know this video came out to be quite long. But uh, if you're still here right now, thank you. And I, I pray that something I shared with you blessed you just as much as I feel like you have so much to bless someone else with in your own personal way. And uh, I love you from here to heaven, man. Next time.